What is up guys, welcome back. And in today's video, we're going to be finishing up our Raspberry Pi kernel driver that allows a user to interface with the GPIO buffer to control the GPIO interface from user space. In our previous videos, we talked about why we had to do this given the constraints of the memory boundary from user to kernel space and then also from kernel to hardware. We created a file in the proc fs file system slash proc slash low level learning GPIO that allowed a user to talk to a driver and that driver then could do something with that data. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys the code that I wrote that finishes up the driver that allows a user to turn an LED on and off from user space via this driver's interface that it creates for the user. So here you can see I've got the Raspberry Pi all powered up. We'll turn it off there real quick and turn off the cam link, boom. And we'll go right into the code. So here I've made a couple modifications to the code. I'll pull it up. Um, so we're going from top to bottom here. The first thing we had to do here is we have to actually map in the memory of the GPIO interface. So the GPIO interface exists at a physical address on the Raspberry Pi 3. The kernel actually can't access that by default either because every memory address access that even the kernel makes goes through what's called a MMU, a memory management unit. It's the job of the MMU to translate a what's called virtual address into a physical address. And if the virtual address doesn't have a map to a physical address, the kernel can't actually talk to that interface. So we need to ask the MMU, hey, can you give me a virtual address tr translation for the GPIO interface? And here you'll see I define the GPIO interface as our magical address we've always talked about, ox 3 f 20 So. We ask the kernel, can you map that address in for us? And can you give us a full page of memory? I don't think you have to actually ask for a, pu a full page, but historically, if you don't uh, ask for maps on a page aligned boundary, sometimes the kernel or the NMU can get mad at you. So I just ask for a full page of memory at that location. We check to make sure that it does not come back as null. If it comes back as null, we say, hey, like, I don't know what to do at this point. The NMU did not return a value and we fail. Otherwise, we successfully mapped in the GPIO memory. And then we continue on with our day. So once this gets ran, we have a global variable called GPIO registers uh, that exists at this address and it maps to the GPIO interface as we showed you before in previous tutorials. Then what I've done is I've added some additional code. So remember previously in my last video, we have this function here that gets ran every time a user writes to the procfs file in proc, right? So if a user opens us and writes to us, this gets ran. Originally, we would just say, hello, you gave us this value. But now we have to actually parse that value and figure out what they're trying to tell us and then do something with that. So I've added a little bit of stuff here. Um, I basically just print the buffer that they gave us. And then I use scanf to extract the pin number and the value that we actually want to turn on and off, right? So remember the format we wanted to do is pin 21, turn it on with one or turn it off with zero, right? So if we scan F the buffer for two values, you know, put pin here and value there, these two addresses, if we don't get two elements back, that means it was in an improper format. So we fail and we return the size that they sent us. Otherwise, if we do get two values out, we want to make sure that those values are valid, right? So we want to make sure that the pin is less than 21 and it's greater than zero. Those are the only pins we have access to physically on the Raspberry Pi, and I don't really care about the rest of them. So if it's not within that range, we say, hey, bad pin number, sorry, and we fail. Otherwise, if the value is not a zero or it's not a one, we also fail. I don't want to do anything other than turn it on or off. I don't know what two means. So we fail on things other than one or zero. And then finally, if we get to this point, we've gotten a you know, valid input from the user. Um, we say, hey, okay, cool, you've given us pin X and value Y. And then we say, if the value was one, we turn the pin on. And if the value was zero, we turn the pin off, right? So we're gonna go up here now. And this is where the code gets a little more complicated, but if you go back to the tutorial that I did in assembly, it's actually extremely similar. We need to be able to tell how we index into this GPIO register structure based on the pin number. And the math plays out basically that the function select index, the you know function select register that we choose, and remember there are three of them or four of them, um, is the pin number divided by 10. Then the function select bit position, right? The function select position that we have to actually enable in that register is just that pin number mod 10. So for example, if it was 21, we would index into the second function select register and we would turn on value one. 
Okay, so we get the address of that register in particular by taking the base address and just adding that index to the, the pointer value. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And then finally, we need to calculate the address of the register that we actually use to turn the pin on. So remember, this register makes the pin an output, and then this register makes the pin turn on. And this is basically always hard-coded. It's always the base address plus 1C. So I didn't want to do any fa fancy math on that. That should not change. And then a little bit of bitwise magic going on here, but basically what this does is this sets the function select for this pin to all zeros, and then we only turn on the least significant bit for that pin. And again, I'll pull the data sheet up here to kind of show you how that, how that math plays out. But basically this makes it a input very momentarily, and then this turns on the last bit so that it's now an output. And we do that so that if the value had previous values there before, here, here we clear it, and here we set it, right? And then finally, now that it is declared as an output value in the function select, then we turn that pin on by setting the pin number left shifted by one, or one left shifted by the pin number uh, with an or value, right? So this whole function turns a pin number to an output and then enables it. Okay, so if we write 21 comma one, for example, this will turn on pin 21, awesome. And then the exact same thing happens here, right? If we get a zero from the user, uh, we have a pointer into this register set that points to the output select off register in the GPIO structure. And then we just turn off that pin, right? So pretty straightforward. So we can actually test that real quick and I can show you guys that it works um, by first we have to build the driver. That takes a few seconds here, I'll let that run. You should see no errors here. I've cleaned up the code a little bit, be proud of me. <laughs> Yep, cool, so we'll rm mod the driver because I already have it installed and now we're gonna ins mod it. And now I can do things like echo 21 comma one into proc low level learning GPIO. And we'll do that. And then you can see two things. We have to type D message here and I've been testing this so ignore the rest of my code, right? Or the rest of this, this information. Um, but this is it telling me that it got this data buffer and it said that I wanted to do pin 21 comma one. Very cool and you can see here, I'll pull up the LED and now the LED is on. And then as we go through here, I will turn the LED off pretty cool so we've gotten it to work but now like this interface is still a little messy because i have to go into the command line and type echo 21 comma zero or 21 comma one and write it to this file what we can actually do now with this file that exists in procfs is we can write a user mode program just regular old code that interfaces with this driver and makes it do things i've got this program here i know it's just basic c this is not in the kernel this is just in user mode and all it does is it opens proc low-level learning GPIO as a file. And then once it gets that open, and again, I'm being a bad programmer, I'm not checking the return value. <laughs> Don't hate me for that. Um, we go in an infinite loop, and then we write 2f, I want to turn on pin 21, and we do four because this string is four bytes long. And then we sleep for half a second. And then we use write f to pin 21 comma zero, which means we turn pin 21 off. And again, that's four bytes long and we sleep. So this is created now an interface where our user mode code can just go ahead and use the driver to do things. And now if I run this program here, it'll run in the background forever and I'll turn the camera on and you'll see that the LED is blinking at a half second interval. So guys, this tutorial has been basically about how do we create drivers in the kernel and how do we use the procfs or the dev file system to create these interfaces that the user can use to touch the driver right and then ultimately how do we create our program that makes use of our driver so i hope you guys have learned something if you have do me a favor hit like hit subscribe also if you haven't already follow me on twitch i'm starting a series on game boy advanced game development i'll drop the link here in the video um, you guys, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.